This lesson examines continuous probability distributions with a specific focus on the normal distribution, which is the bell curve that governs many phenomena and most people are familiar with as one of the few things in statistics they may have been exposed to. We don't start with the normal distribution though because even though it sounds innocuous as normal distribution, it's actually fairly complicated. What we'll start with instead is with a uniform distribution where every allowed value has equal weight. And in that situation, what we'll start to learn to understand is how with continuous probability distributions, the conversation is about intervals of values. What is the chance that the actual value will fall within a certain range? With continuous distributions, we try not to talk about the probability of an exact specific value because there's an infinite number of values in a continuous distribution and no one value has any particular weight. So we'll take our time step by step and march into those kinds of issues. We'll start with a uniform distribution, understand the basic ideas, then we'll step up to the normal distribution, which is another continuous distribution, which in that basic U shape or upside down bell has most of its values centered towards the middle, but then there's some tail, and that's referred to as tail risk, where you can have some unusual low outcome or some unusual high outcome, and we'll learn how to think about those problems, and we'll find that the mechanics of solving those problems involves a large visual element which will be familiar and welcome for many students and not so much formula-driven mechanics. So we'll understand how we can take the problem as stated, convert it through a sequence of visual steps that we'll be addressing in the lesson into a problem that can be solved. And then at that point, we'll be making reference to a table of values, bringing back the answer that that table can give us and then repackaging that solution into an answer to the specific problem that's asked. So there are a number of concepts involved in this, and then there are some discrete mechanics of solving problems of this type, and I think it will have a different flavor than some of the other lessons in statistics in that it's less formula-driven and more conceptually driven.